Will you please open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, this morning. And um, how many of you were here last week? If you can remember, the challenge laid down uh, to everybody last uh, Sunday is to follow the pathway of, new, of, pathway of newness, being people who have received the new birth. How many of you are born again? You have given your life to Jesus Christ. There is a path that we are to follow, and that path is the pathway of newness. With this, we are to be made new in the attitude of our minds, and to put off the old self, the old you, the old sinner in you, so that we can all be of service to God in relations to our partnership in the gospel. Now, in that study, we have learned the value of teaching in putting off the old self. The more we expose ourselves to a life-transforming biblical teaching, the more we can render that old fellow, that old self, dead. How many of you are born again? The Bible says you are a new species. We are all new creation in Christ. And the word there in the Greek is the word metamorphosis. Okay? You used to be this ugly worm, and then you turned out to be a butterfly. But there's something you got to, to know about a butterfly. The moment it metamorphoses, it cannot go back to the old self. Hello? The butterfly cannot revert to becoming the old self. And so are we. Look at somebody and say, so are you? So are we. And likewise, we have talked about the thinking of or the mindset of the old self. That is, it feeds, all, or it feeds much on the world and the flesh's corrupted desires. And that the old self, uh, self's thinking or mentality basically is negative, defeated, in a box thinking, a mentality that avoids change, a poverty-oriented thinking, and a mindset that does not conform to the word of God or the standard of God. Now, in contrast to the old self, we, have also, we also have learned the new self's identity or mentality. That it is positive. That is, uh, it is a mindset of victory. That is a mindset of unlimited thinking. Not in a box thinking. It's also a mindset of prosperity and a mindset of service. Say service. We need to serve the Lord. Every born-again child of God must serve the Lord. You are not here uh, because you have joined a new religion. You are here because you gave your life to Jesus Christ in the service of the gospel. Now, this morning, I want to further build on this principle. And I entitled this message this week as the making of a new person. The making of a new person. Ephesians chapter 4, 22 and 23. You were taught, say you were taught, with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, and to be made new in the attitude of your minds. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come unto you. And we ask you, Lord God, to speak to our hearts. I pray, Father God, that the word that we have been receiving lately will become so valuable that we will be of great use uh, in the kingdom of God. That we will not just be people sitting down, but we will be people who will avail ourselves for you, Lord God, and the gospel. Use us, but change us, O oh God, firstly. And so, Lord, use me under your anointing, and thank you for your strength that is flowing in my body right now. Thank you, and I give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said... Now let us begin uh, the study with looking at uh, how our attitude uh, can either make us or break us. Our attitude can either make us or break us. This is basically dependent on whether we will follow the path of newness or the path of the old self. So again, this is basically dependent on whether we will follow the path of newness or the path of the old self. Because there are Christians who could care less how they live their lives. They do not regard the new self as well as the old self. To them it's just being religious. 
to them is just stepping into church and then going away. But unknowingly, and unknowingly, with this kind of attitude, they still fail to realize that they have never really set out of the old self, and so their Christianity is in question. The fact is this, leaving the old self will normally break us, while the path of newness or the new life will make us. This is a choice. We have a choice on this. I want us to go back to the time that uh, Adam and Eve were still in the garden. How many of you know that there is, there is a tree of life that exists, existed in the middle of the garden? And there is also the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God, which God forbids them uh, to go. Now, in our lives, we have to understand something. We've got to place ourselves in the shoes of Adam and Eve, so to speak. Are we to follow the way to the tree of life? There's something you've got, you got to know about the tree of life. And I have already uh, talked to you about this several times in the past. Uh, you've got to know that there is a way that God created towards the tree of life. There is a way that God paved for Adam and Eve to go back and forth to the tree of life. Okay? God, wants them, uh, God wanted them to eat from the tree of life every time. However, when Adam and Eve sinned, this path was guarded by a cherubim and a flaming sword that flashed back and forth to prevent Adam and Eve from going there in their corrupted state. Because when they eat of this in that corrupted state, they could not be saved anymore. They could not be redeemed anymore. Uh, Genesis chapter 3, 24. After he drove, out, uh, he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the garden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth. For what reason? Not to guard the tree of life but to guard the way to the tree of life, okay? It's not to guard them uh, to the tree of life, but the way to the tree of life. I want you to notice that there is always a way to the newness of life. If you will follow this principle, the way to the tree of life, from Genesis to Revelation, you will always see this. But in the New Testament, the way to newness is none other than Jesus Christ. John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by me. So Jesus is the pathway to newness. And we ought to be traveling on this path until we leave this earth. Are you here, everybody? Jesus is our way. Now, in contrast to the tree, or, or in contrast to the way to the tree of life, there was no path or way leading to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God did not create a pathway there. It was a forbidden tree. This is the truth it presents. God will not, or oh, does not lead us to sin. He did not create a pathway there, there. And I believe it was not God who created the, the tree, the, that forbidden tree. It was a devil who planted probably the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. To, uh, to uh, uh, what, what do you call this? To uh, contrast or counteract the tree of life. So there was no way or path towards the tree of life. I'm sorry, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God does not lead us to sin. This is the principle that we are to remember. However, for Adam and Eve to reach to that forbidden tree, listen carefully, they got to create their own way. To reach to that forbidden tree, they got to create their own way. They have to make a way by their own selfish gods and disobedience. In contradiction to the word of God, and eventually that tree corrupted them. 
How many of you remember uh, the message that I taught you on this? This is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Say, and evil. It is not the tree of the knowledge of good or evil. It is a tree of the knowledge of good and attached to it is evil. So it has a front and the front is kind of looking good, smiling at you. But behind it, there is a monster ready to eat you up. That's how sin, uh, that's how the devil tricks us with sin. It looks appealing. That's why it's called deceitful lusts. It deceives you. It looks good on you. Bagay sa akin ito. But no unknowing, uh, knowingly, there is a monster that is behind it, ready to eat you up and destroy you. Now, listen. This tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a picture of the world. The only path that God created for us is the path of newness. God did not create a path going back to the world. Hello? There is no path the moment you got born again, no path that God had created for you to go back to the world. There is no such road, such path, such way. And if you are going back to the world, that is your choice. You create your own way. Hello. The way to God is none other than Shout it, everybody. Jesus. And we are to always be on this pathway. Don't create your own way by your own stubbornness. Don't be deceived by deceitful lusts. You need to follow the way of God. And everybody said, in holiness and in truth. Now, with this in mind, let us focus our thoughts on the old self. What is the old self? The old self is basically a corrupted self. Say corrupted self. Let's see Ephesians 4.22 again from NIV and New King James Version. NIV says, put off your old self, which is being, being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Say being corrupted. It's ongoing. But the New King James, which is translated word for word, says concerning your former conduct, the old man, which what? Grows corrupt. Okay? It gives us a, big t a better picture than just simply being corrupted, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. So take note how the old self stays on the path of corruption. If people will choose this path, this self will grow corrupt. And I want you to notice that this is in the present tense, grows corrupt. So instead of growing in Christ, people who are deceived by deceitful lusts, listen carefully, they will grow more and more corrupt. That's not my words, or oh, these are not my words. These are the words of Paul here, the Bible. So there is something that grows in the inside while we should all be growing in Christ. But if you revert to the former way, you will also grow. Done word. Grow corrupt. And this is caused by deceitful lusts like the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or the lusts that are brought by deceit. Just like Adam and Eve, when they fell into, uh, into sin, they, they actually fell uh, in, uh, into it uh, by the deceit of the devil. So being on this path is not fitting for born-again Christians like you and me. Look at your neighbors, um, both sides and say, this is not fitting for you and me. Both sides. This is not fitting for you and me. 
For Christ has redeemed us, and redeemed us not with gold or any precious stones, but redeemed us by his precious blood. And we cannot trample down on the blood of Jesus Christ because there is no more sacrifice when, do, when we do such a thing. So, in this way, we are to live in the newness of life. This is not fitting for us. Walk the way of Christ. Amen? Another way to say it is walk the walk. They walk the walk. Amen? Walk the walk of Christ. But what happens with some is that they never have gotten out of the old self. Along with the evil, uh, with the evil desires that corrupt the old man. Some return to their rotten lifestyle. Can you say the word rotten? I'm not saying this just because I would just like to say it. Let's go to the Greek word, or the Greek meaning. The word corrupt in the Greek points to something that spoils. Something that spoils, like a spoiled milk or a spoiled food, right? Sino na ang nakakain, nakatikim ng panis na pagkain? Okay? Spoiled food. What causes food to spoil? Louder, please. Some of you were not in the service. What causes the food to spoil? Too simple. It starts with letter, letter B. Vitamins, I know. Uh, <laughs> bacteria. Right? Microbes. When bacteria begin to accumulate and consume the milk or food, when you have not kept it in the fridge, just like Jesus is our fridge. Amen? Right? You just let it be exposed to the world. It, uh, the life will soon be eaten by spiritual bacteria. The world will eat up. Christians, the newness of life. Expose yourself to the world and sin, I tell you, you will be spoiled. You will become rotten, corrupt, or corrupted. Are you here? Why but I lahat? Now, how can a believer uh, allow himself or herself to be eaten up by the world and sin unless they are allowing themselves to do so? Now, also listen, one of the things that we also have to realize with regard to food, even though if the food is, uh, is freshly cooked, if you mix it with some spoil, spoiled food, it will soon, very soon, rot. Hello? Freshly cooked, haluan mo ng spoiled food. What do you think will happen? the whole thing will be spoiled. So do not allow yourself to mix, listen carefully, with some rotten and spoiled people of the world. Are you listening? If you allow yourself to be mixed with them, you will soon also rot together with them. But not just them. These people in the world, there are Christians, people who call themselves Christians, but they are rotten too. Hello, in the inside. They may have the facade of being a believer. They may uh, seem to be religious, but inside of them, there's no difference between the people of the world and them. Are you all here? Look at somebody and say, preserve yourself. Here's what Paul said. You're very familiar with this verse. 1 Corinthians 5.33. Do not be misled. Let's read the next uh, words together. Bad. 
company corrupts good character. You alone, bad. One more time. That word corrupts is the same Greek word in Ephesians 4.22. Bad company will rot you too. Hello? So, the moment you begin to live as Christians, you got to move away from your association. Although, yeah, you will maintain some contact with them, but you are no longer to mix yourself so strongly with them. You are to find new Christians or believers who can be your best friend. Is everybody here? Because those guys in school will continue to pervert your thinking like them. Bad company, what? Corrupts good character. So you may be freshly cooked, newly born again. You love Jesus so much. Hallelujah, filled with the Spirit. But the moment you leave that place and you go back to the world, the bad company, you will soon be rotten. Okay? Now, on the other hand, the new self is a renewed self. Let's go to the second half of this message. The new self is a renewed self. This is where we should always direct our lives to. We should always seek to be renewed. We should always seek to be refreshed from time to time. And you call this revival. Say revival. This church, we love revival here. We got a great moving of the Holy Spirit just a while ago, right? And if you would like to really soak more in the presence of God, come here Friday night and you will be revived, I tell you. You will fall in love with Jesus more and more. Christians must always stay revived spiritually. We are never to come to a point wherein we dry up and we become cold. In fact, we should have our own spiritual thermometer to, reg uh, to regularly check if we are hot or cold. Because Jesus wants us to always check our spiritual condition. He does not want us to be lukewarm. Right? Being lukewarm is being useless in the kingdom. Jesus said, because you're lukewarm, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You have no taste. Have you ever drank lukewarm coffee? What's your natural tendencies? <laughs> okay. And that's the attitude of Christ. I'm about to spew you out of my mouth. I cannot take you in. Jesus always wants us to be in the rightful spiritual con uh, condition. Always ready to serve him. Always ready to do his work on this earth, being his representatives, being his faithful witnesses. How many of you are Christ's ambassadors? You are witnesses of Christ. But you know what? There is even a, a, a lesson. There's something that God made naturally. You see this every day for us to teach what it is to be a faithful witness of God. And that is the moon. Say the moon. How many of you ever seen the moon? Some, where, where are some of you have never seen the moon yet? Hello? Are you living in the earth? The moon, according to Psalm 89, 37. Like the moon, it shall be established forever, a faithful witness in the skies. Now, other, there are other versions that said, my faithful, or other portion, another scripture that says, my faithful witness. The moon is God's faithful witness. The moon sees everything that happens in the world, so to speak. But... During our studies on the Feasts of the Lord, from Passover to uh, Feast of Tabernacles, 
we have known that uh, you know the seasons of God because of the moon. You measured everything by the moon. That's why God said, you're my faithful witness. You announce Passover. You announce Shavuot. You announce uh, the Feast of uh, Trumpets, the Feast of uh, Tabernacles. It's always like that every year. But there's also something about the moon. And it happens every day or every night. The moon, listen carefully, is God's representative. It's God's faithful witness. The moon, every night, reflects the sun's light to the earth. Hello? The moon reflects the sun's light to the earth. Let me say that again. It reflects the light of the sun to the earth. How many of you are born again Christians? How many of you are representatives of Christ? How many of you are his faithful witness? Number one, you got to know the seasons of God by which you can come to him. But every night or every day, you are to reflect the light of the Son of God to the people of the world. Are you here? Say, every night, and it ha does not happen in the day. It only happens in the dark. How many of you that know that we are living in a dark world? And the world needs the light of the sun through you. You are the moons of God. Look at somebody and say, you are the moon of God. Hello. That's why God calls the moon my faithful witness. Are we also his faithful witness? Do we reflect the light of the sun, S-O-N, to the people of the world? In these dark times, or are you caught in the darkness of the night? Hello. Is everybody alive? I believe before Adam and Eve fell, each time they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, their strength was refreshed and renewed. Every time. So we, it's very important for us to be uh, revived or refreshed every moment. But you have to know something about the moon. The moon also goes in this, this cycle of renewal. How many of you know, there, know that there's such thing as the new moon? You don't find the moon. Okay, it's hiding. But actually, if you study this, the moon is hibernating somehow to be made fresh again. The new moon in Hebrew is called Rosh uh, Chodesh. Say Rosh Chodesh. You know, I, uh, I made a study on this several years ago, a couple of years ago, maybe three or four years ago, and I haven't preached about it yet. But when I preach it to you, you will understand how the moon is really faithful. It's not, it's not just the moon. Everything that God created there in the universe will, all, will always declare, they, they, they declare rather the glory of God. And everybody said, and all the people of the earth also must declare the glory of God. Amen? Did you receive that? Even in nature, God is teaching us. Now, being renewed is always living in the new way of the Spirit. Romans 7, 6. But now by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve. We serve how? In the new way. Look at the word way. Okay. In the new way. It's a way, but it's new. In the new way of the Spirit, and not in the old way of the written code. So there is a way, a new way, that the Holy Spirit even provides for us. So that we always live in the path of newness. So that we always become the person God wants us to be. Right? 
I'd like to give you three things here under this point. Firstly, in regards to the new way of the Spirit, this is the mind controlled by the Spirit. For you in the, to be in the new way of the Spirit, your mind has got to be controlled by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God should always take dominion over your mind and your heart to make us or to make you a new being always. Romans 8, 6 tells us that this mind is a mind of life and peace. Say alive. Uh, 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 life and peace, rather. Romans 8, 6. The mind of sinful man is what? Death. Kamatayun. But the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Say life. Say that again. How many of you know that God wants us to always live his life? I am the way, the truth, the life. Right? In the Old Testament, in the, in the book of Deuteronomy, uh, God through Moses said to the people of Israel, choose life and not death. So life is always an option. To have life is always an option. So to walk in this newness or new way of the Spirit, which has life and peace to it, this is a choice that we have to make. There is Zoe life, abundant life in this mind. How many of you have watched Breakthrough last uh, Friday? How many of you, come on, I'd like to see your hands. Were you blessed? And you know that this is a true story, based on true stories, right? Right? I admire the faith of the mother from the beginning to the end. Especially when his son was in comatose, when his son has no life, her son rather, has no life. And one, one, one time while uh, the son was in comatose state, his friends came visit him in another room and the mother was there thanking them for coming but eventually the mother heard that they were talking negative about the condition of John Smith the son and he and the mother she got mad and said look my son is fighting for his life in another room and you're talking negatively I don't want you to talk negatively. In this room, everybody will, uh, will only talk life. Say life. And it's not just out of the blues. She believes in faith. She has a mind controlled by the spirit. Life, not death. And you know what happens to the boy eventually, right? The boy came back to life, awoken from the comatose, and returned to normal living again. All the doctor said, I cannot understand this. This is a miracle from God. How many of you like to see miracles? You got to have life in your mind. Hello. Say life. Even when you are in your adverse situation. When you're totally down and sick, do you think negatively? Do you think you will die? Do you think that you have cancer? Do you think that you have no more hope? A person who has the mind of the spirit, a mind controlled by the spirit, has life in his mind and heart. He always thinks about life. I will live and not die and proclaim what the Lord has done. Amen? Amen? Hello? And you will see how things will change in your life. There is power whenever you stand for what is life. And everybody said. But it's not just life, it's coupled with what? Peace. What is life without peace? You may have the finest gold or wealth in the world. You may be the richest guy in the whole world, but without peace. 
everything is useless. Hello. Don't ever um, be jealous with rich people. You look at their lives, they're riding on this uh, beautiful uh, car. They got helicopters and things like that. Let me tell you, they are still human beings. They still have a lot of problems, even bigger than your problems that they face. And some, some of them do not know Jesus Christ. And many also from among these groups, uh, they, got, uh, they, ha- they had uh, committed suicide. But the Spirit gives us life and peace. What more can you ask for? Hallelujah. Look at five people and say, God wants you to have life and peace. Five people. Don't cheat. Amen. This is the life that the Holy Spirit would like you to have. In contrast, the sinful man, the corrupted life is dead. The mind of sinful man is dead. Destruction. Even after your life here on earth, your way is death. Eternal death in hell. Okay, number two, this a new self is created to be like God. Created to be like God. Ephesians 4.24. And to put on, say put on, the new self created to be like God. How? In true righteousness and holiness. The new self, say the new self. Listen. For you to live the new life, the new self has to be put on. Just like this morning, you put on your shirt, your pants, your dresses, your shoes, right? And you you, you don't put on something unconsciously. You put on something, when you put on something on you, There is a conscious effort. You know what you want to wear, right? So it's the same way in the spiritual. We are to put on or clothe ourselves with the new self, with the new life. And this new self is created to be like God. Say like God. And when you're wearing this, and it's created to be like God, how do people see you? How, how do people see you? If you put on the, self, the new self created, in, uh, created to be like God, how will people see you? Like God! Look at your neighbor and say, like God! You're too quiet. Like God! This is the way to live and act and talk and be a godly person. Put on the new self. Don't you know that we, when we go to heaven, we will put on what? A new attire. We will put on a white robe, a linen robe, that will be what we will wear for the entire eternity. Don't worry, you don't need to wash this with tide. Hello? Because it's emitting light. Hello? Hello? The more you have led more, uh, the the more you have led souls to God, the more that clothes shines. Hello? Daig ang tayo. Talo ang tayo. Right? But on earth, God says, put on the new self. In this way, people will see you like God. Amen. Amen. But we are to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. If we go back to Ephesians 4.24. And put on the new self. 
created to be like God in true righteousness. You know, while I was going through this, reviewing this material, I got amazed, though I have read this passage maybe hundreds, hundreds of, hundreds of times in my Christian life, but I got amazed with the word true. It could just have been said, created to be like God in righteousness and holiness. But there is the word true. True righteousness and true holiness. Why? We live in the world where a lot of things are fake. But fake Christians have been here since the first century. Hello? Look at somebody and say, be like God. In true righteousness and true holiness. Don't be a fake in your relationship with God. Some, some people are simply religious. They've just changed religion. Born again, being born again is not a religion. It's a relationship. It's a new life. And everybody said, Amen. So, we are to live in true righteousness and holiness, not fake it. We do not deceive others. We don't fake our Christianity. Sadly, it's, anyway, it's on Facebook lately this week. There is this uh, author before, Christian author, and he became a preacher, a pastor. He's been writing a lot about Christian dating. About living a holy life while you're dating, da 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 da. And his books became famous. Then eventually he passed to the church with his wife. And just recently, this week or a week ago, he announced that he is stepping out of the ministry and divorcing his wife. And then he said, what I have written, I recant them all. They are not real. And you know what? The bookstores in America, they are pulling out all of his books right now. And then just last, yesterday was it? In, on, on Facebook, he said, I'm not a Christian. He didn't say, I am no longer a Christian. He said, I am not a Christian. And uh, he is going back to the world and recounting everything that he has believed. Now, listen carefully. Pastors are not exempted from this temptation. And if it can happen to a pastor, it can happen to everybody. Don't think of pastors as always holy. They also struggle. And you got to pray for your pastors. Amen? Amen? How many, how many of you would pray for me and the pastors? Because we are the easy target of the enemy. If he can bring us down, the church will be destroyed. But don't just pray for us. Pray for all the pastors in Davao City, in the Philippines, and the world. It's not an easy thing to be in the ministry. The enemy will target you. Thirdly, and this is the last before I end. This new self is also being renewed in knowledge. Colossians 3 verse 10. And I put on the new self, which is what? Being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Again, we find the words put on the new self. And the new self is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Again, we find the value of instruction or teaching, right? How does knowledge come? How does knowledge come? By studying, by teaching, right? Come on. How many of you have ever graduated from college? And some of you maybe have taken uh, another course after that. 
you're a double courser. Or you're going to medicine proper, or you're going to law proper, and so on. Knowledge comes through studying and teaching, right? Right? And look at this. The new self is being renewed in knowledge, which means this is an ongoing or ongoing process. It does not stop. Are you here? You know what? God doesn't want us to have stock knowledge. There are Christians who uh, glory in their past knowledge. That's why careful with theologians. Theologians, basic, uh, theologians basically are dried up Christians. They know theology. Sorry to say that, huh? But uh, they fail to refresh themselves. Hello? We are to be refreshed in knowledge. Some of you know salvation inside and out. You can quote all the scriptures about salvation. But it has gone old in you. And there's no freshness to it anymore. That's why God wants us to put on the new self. And in this way, we are renewed in knowledge. And the knowledge is related to the image of the Creator. Amen. To be like God, just like in Ephesians 4.22. Created to be like God. So such a knowledge is life transforming. Our God is our creator. What you hear in this place is not simply sermons, but life transforming messages to bring out the new life in you and for the old self to be put off or put away. You hear teaching in this place. There are teaching that I do that are so heavy. Sometimes I will just preach to lighten everyone. But right now I'm teaching, but it's a light teaching, right? There's some, uh, I, I heard somebody that, hey, John's a praise revival center. You're at praise revival center. You, 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 uh, the message that you receive is so hard. It's just like a college level. Think about that, but we college. And I said, I think you're wrong. And I heard that that person may be wrong. It's not college level. It's PhD level. Hello? We want you to grow in the Word of God. How, how do you study? How do you learn? Can I tell you one key? You take notes. You take notes. You take notes. You take notes. Hello? You may not be a musician, but you know how to take notes. How do you like it when you are at school? And you are in school, that, 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 that class is supposed to be two hours, or maybe more. And you are there while the, 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 the teacher, the instructor is lecturing, the professor is lecturing, and you are not writing. What do you think the professor will do? He will grab something and throw it at your head. Why are you here? Hello? Are you here to become a lawyer? Are you here to become a doctor? Are you here to become an engineer? Why are you not taking notes? Hello? That's up to you. When the test comes around and you have nothing to review, then how many of you believe that there is also a test for every Christian? Hello? In this life. And you got to know the word that has been preached to you. And you have not recorded those words. And when you have problems and you have these great testings in your life, will you pass it or fail it? Look at somebody and say, take notes. Just because uh, this is a sermon, you don't take notes. But this is eternal life. What is happening here is to make you go or reach heaven. Hello? Everybody's quiet this morning. 
Since last night, everybody was quiet. Am I hitting some notes here? <laughs> yes. Okay. So, lastly, let's go to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Here is what we are to always do. I gave you this scripture last, last week, or Sister Maki read this to you. And uh, let me end uh, going through this again. Colossians 3, 1 and 2, NIV. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. This is then how change will happen. It will change the way we think to conform to the new man God wants us to be all throughout our lives. How many of you believe that God wants you to be above? Right? Right? God said through Moses, you are the head and not the tail. You will be above and never beneath. Same thing here. Our minds have only one place to be and one direction to go. On the things above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. That is where our mind should always be, above in the realm of God, in the realm of Christ, and never at the bottom, which is the realm of defeat and destruction. Not on earthly things, above. Say above. When you're sick, do you think above? When you are in pain, do you think above? Or do you think earthly is our choice? Miracle happens when we think above, where Christ is seated. Amen. At the right hand of our Father. Did you receive the word of God? Really receive the word of God? Praise the Lord. Let's all stand up and give the Lord a clap offering. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God.